Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss some problem regarding the responses of the second order system. Here, the problem is step response of set of three second order system will have the same percentage of overshoot. Which of the following represents poles of the system? So in this case, the most important thing is it has the three second order system. So we have three systems. The three system having three system having step responses. All are the step responses. That means here we give three different different systems. Why second order system? The second order system itself it represents so these two poles for one, these two poles for second system, these three poles for second system. Same, all our six poles are available. Two poles for two poles for two poles second order. So we have these three, so almost we have the six poles. Okay. And this is the output. This is the output. Here he mentioned having same percentage overshoot. So these three have the, the common thing is the percentage of overshoot is same for all. Overshoot is same. So what is percentage of overshoot? You know that the formula e power minus zeta omega n by root of 1 minus zeta square will be same. Same. That means if you observe here, here the most important thing is in order to make the same percentage of overshoot, the three system having the same damping ratio. Look at here, here zeta must be the same. So that means for the three system, system 1, zeta 1. For system 2 is zeta 2, for system 3 is zeta 3. For the three systems, we have the same damping ratio. Same damping ratio. It has the same damping ratios. Three systems, three different ratios. And you know, the damping ratio is nothing but cos phi 1 and cos phi 2 and cos phi 3 so these phi, these angles also must be same phi 1 and phi 2 phi 3 what is so observe here these are different different angles we have we have different different phase angles but here if you observe the option c in this option c we have three poles we have three poles these three poles having the same angle we have the three poles so these three poles have the same angle these poles have same angle these two poles have the same angle and these two poles have the same angle so this represents the phase so by using this we will solve this problem so the answer is the c option c is the correct answer option c is the correct answer okay so for this we will discuss some points regarding this problem so here we have second order system second order systems having some characteristics those are if for second order systems real part is same real part is constant so what is real part for the pole? What is the pole? The pole C is, we can write like this. The pole C is represents S equal minus zeta omega n plus or minus omega n root of 1 minus zeta square. So we have two poles plus j omega n root of 1 minus zeta square. So this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. All right. Whenever this real part is constant, what is that meaning? So, zeta omega n is constant. So, what do you know the relation between the time and zeta omega n? 
the tau equal to minus 1 by zeta omega n. So by using this we can write time constants also constant given systems if the three systems are available those three systems time constant must be same understand so in the given poles in the given system if the real part is same for the poles then automatically the time constant of the systems must be same so this is tau 1 equal tau 2 equal tau 3 and in the second case if imaginary part is constant for the given system finding the given poles imaginary is constant imaginary part is constant then what is imaginary part we can write this omega n root of 1 minus zeta square with the omega d understand that means damping frequency omega d what is damping omega d means you know the damping frequency at which frequency the oscillations will be removed is known as the damping frequency this will be constant okay so so these are the important points and so this is for in the given system look at here in the first system these all for real parts are same so look at here for this real part is for example if you take the one minus one all is minus one so we can consider option a for this real part and for the option b and for option b imaginary part is constant look at here this is the imaginary part and for this imaginary part so option b is imaginary part is constant so for this wherever the imaginary part is constant damping frequency is constant and next for option 3 we already did it is peak overshoot will be constant so so option d we have different different if you look at option d tau will be varied time constant will be varied and damping frequency will be varied and cos pi will be varied all are varied okay so 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 we can analyze this we will understand so how the real parts and imaginary parts and how the peak overshoot will design that in different different type of systems okay so so by looking at the diagram we can pick up the option okay next next problem is the step response of lti system is y of t equal 5 into e power minus 10 t into u of t so here we are give, we have some transfer function for this we are giving the input step input and it will give the output that is 5 into e power minus 10 t u of t yes and output of the system to impulse response del of t is h of t so but if you are giving the same system we have the same system for the system if you are giving the impulse then that value is h of t then he is asking to find out this value so we have a one important relation that is so whenever we are differentiating the impulse uh, unit step we will get the del of t so for this impulse for in case of in case of inputs so outputs also we can apply the same thing so to get the h of t by derivating the output of the unit step response so the we are derivating this output output is 5 into e power minus 10 t into u of t okay so here 5 is the common uh, constant and applying the differentiation to the inside parts one is e power minus 10 t another part is the u of t so by differentiating this we will get 5 so e power minus 10 t is the constant 
by doing the differentiation with u of t so just write it d of d by dt into u of t plus so u of t into d by dt into e power minus 10t so here 5 is the constant and e power minus 10t also the constant by doing the differentiation for step we have impulse that is del of t and u of t is the constant by differentiating this we have the e power minus 10t by differentiating this we have minus 10 we have minus 10 okay and 5 is the constant here 5 should be written in the pocket so by that we will simplify like this we will write the like this that is the remaining part is 5 into e power minus 10 t del of t minus 10 into u of t e power minus 10 t and impulse having only one condition that is we can write like this impulse only possible at at the impulse is possible only t equal to 0 so just substitute the impulse value at t equal 0 so substitute in this at t equal to 0 so I am writing this e power minus 10 into 0 del of 0 okay del of t so then we have 1 into del of t right so again you should write here this value 5 into remaining part is the del of t minus 10 into u of t e power minus 10 t e power minus 10 t so finally we will conclude that that is 5 into del of t 5 into 10 become minus 50 into u of t e power minus 10 t this is the value of the h of t value of the h of t here the only thing is impulse doesn't have any uh, any this exponential indicator that's why we are substituting in place of t is 0 then we have this value okay so this is the procedure to find if if the step response is given if we need to ask the impulse response we need to follow the processors so same as we have the relation we have the relation between different different type of signals that is so we have to write here so differentiating the parabola signal p of t is the parabola signal we will get the ramp signal this is the ramp by differentiating the ramp signal we will get the step signal same differentiating the step signal we will get the impulse signal impulse signal so this is the very very important relation very very important relation and we can follow the same thing from this integrating the ramp signal we will get parabola signal same integrating the unit step we will have the ramp signal same integrating the impulse signal we will get the we will get this step signal okay this is the very very important relation between the signals these are very much useful in solving the problems okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you